I am honored to introduce our special speaker today, Dr. Ray Don S. Papa. Uh, Dr. Papa is a professor of biological sciences at the University of Santo Tomas. He's a product of UST, true and true, earning his BS, MS, and PhD with excellence. A limnologist specializing in freshwater zooplankton ecology and systematics, he has published around 70 scientific publications to date. He teaches uh, zoology and ecology courses to graduate and undergraduate students and established the zoo zooplankton ecology, systematics, and limnology research group of the USD Research Center for, for the Natural and Applied Sciences. He has received grants, awards, and recognition for his research from the, from the US National Academy of Science and, U, and USAID, German Academy Exchange Service, the International Society of Limnology, USD, CHED, DOST, and several professional organizations. At present, he is the Dean of the USD College of Science, Program Lead for Natural Sciences at the USD Graduate School, and Editor-in-Chief of the Antoninus Journal. He is the President of the Association of Systematic Biologists of the Philippines, Vice President of the Philippine Society for Freshwater Science, and National Representative of the Philippines to the International Society of Limnology. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our esteemed speaker, Dean Ray Don S. Papa. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Florante. Thank you very morning, much, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Marian, uh, for the invitation. It is an honor and privilege for me to have been invited to speak in your biodiversity um, seminar series. Um, of course, um, I have many um, wonderful friends and colleagues who are affiliated with the uh, uh, Museum of Natural History. And uh, of course, my dear PhD advisor is uh, a UPLB professor emerita, no? uh, Dr. Macrina Zafaralia. And so um, it is nice to be able to give no, this talk, no, to share this um, talk with you about um, my researches, no, um, which I have done uh, for the past decade or so um, in limnology. So I, I was told by uh, Sir Florante that uh, I should, and, and Mamaria, no, I should come up with a, uh, an interesting title, no, a catchy title. So um, since every afternoon, almost every afternoon, I have tea, no? uh, so I just thought of using the uh, T no, as an acronym for what it is that we do in uh, the laboratory. So we do, for, for, for zooplankton research, we do mostly taxonomy, ecology, and applied research no, on freshwater zooplankton. Um, here, of course, in the country. And so that's what I will be sharing with you um, this morning for my talk no? uh, about um, our efforts in zooplankton tea, no? so to speak. Um, I chose um, the topics that I will be sharing with you carefully because um, uh, next week I would also, I, was, I had also been invited to give a talk on uh, Philippine plankton. And, and uh, I don't want any overlaps with uh, the topic that I will be discussing there. So I decided to um, emphasize on some key points that are um, uh, important to give you an overview of what we have been doing uh, in terms of um, the research strides that we have made no? in terms of taxonomy, ecology, and applied research on freshwater zooplankton in the Philippines. So this would be the outline of my talk. And I would like to uh, begin, you know, this is a very general slide that I use because many of you, when you come to uh, hear of the word plankton, you, know, you automatically think of uh, Sheldon plankton. You know? um, the term itself, plankton, is not actually a taxon. It is a term that is describing a characteristic you know, of several organisms, you know? um, microbial uh, or bacterial, fungal, uh, viral, uh, plant, and animal you know, that cannot go against the flow of the water current. So plankton technically means to wander or to drift. 
okay so if you look at that well of course um in in terms of um what i'll be talking with you or discussing with you this morning i'll be discussing about the zooplankton you know? so the animal part of the planktonic community so in terms of size distribution um you would see here that planktonic organisms would range from 0.02 micrometers all the way to around 200 centimeters no so in terms of size distribution they would be from your femtoplankton all the way to your megaplankton and then of course since these planktonic organisms belong to different phyla you classify them according to um the the the, the different taxa that they belong to so you would have from your virioplankton which are the smallest ones all the way to your metazooplankton which would be your larger ones no but for um, freshwater zooplankton, many of them are classified under protozooplankton. And so uh, they would be, um, the size distribution would be from 20 microns all the way to around um, 20 um, centimeters no? in, in um, length. Okay? So that is how you classify your um, planktonic organisms. Now, in the environment, of course, your plankton would be important in terms of their ability to serve as indicators of change. Um, the unique life histories and importance of um, uh, zooplankton no, um, play a big role in um, defining their role in aquatic ecosystems because um, their life cycles, no, their life histories are very much coupled with external factors, no, with physical and chemical parameters of their immediate environment. So whether it be temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, salinity, they would all play a big role in determining the life history um, parameters and patterns no, um, that zooplankton would be exhibiting in a given environment. Now, among the more important ones, of course, um, would be related to temperature changes. As such, um they have been um, utilized no, in the past to um, look at potential patterns no, related to um, changes in climate okay um given all these parameters um, your zooplankton are very useful in lake management so um for lake zooplankton for instance no um the the uh, zooplankton that i'm most familiar with um they have been referred to as beacons of sentinels of climate change. No? Uh, this is based on two different um, papers. One has called zooplankton as beacons of climate change. And another paper by Adrian referred to lakes as sentinels of climate change. So if you put these two together, you would be able to say that your zooplankton are beacons, no? of sentinels of climate change no ano ba yung ginagawa ng beacon no well they shed light no they they illuminate no they they um um provide um clarity now and then your sentinels would of course be um you you can you can um uh parang equate them no to being watchtowers so kumbaga yung 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 zooplankton ngayon no parang sila yung ilaw dun sa ibabaw ng isang watchtower na pwede mong gamitin no na para pagmatyagan kung ano yung klase ng changes na nangyayari sa environment lalo na no pag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay patungkol sa climate so these two put together um, play very important roles now in the environment however um, the um, importance that we attach to them is usually diminished you know, by um, virtue of the small size of the plankton. Um, and, and since you cannot see them, they, we, we do not classify them or characterize them as your um, charismatic taxa, you know, charismatic animals, charismatic organisms. You know. um, Di mo nga alam, minsan pag uminom ka ng tubig, for all you know, ang dami ng plankton doon, hindi mo sila makikita. Kaya very rarely silang nakoconsider no, na may importansya, kahit na matindi yung importansya nila. 
So if you talk about freshwater zooplankton, they would be belonging to three um, major taxa. No? You have um, your rotifers, your wheeled animalcules, which belong to phylum rotifera. And then you have your water fleas, which belong to suborder cladocera. And then you have your copepods, no? which belong to subclass copepoda. So these three major types of um, freshwater zooplankton are the ones that um, we have been studying mostly in our laboratory. So if you compare now the characteristics of the different um, uh, major zooplankton taxa, this is according to um, C.H. Fernando in 2002, you would see here um, uh, variations in terms of their reproduction, in terms of their mode of reproduction, in terms of the maximum reproductive rate per day, all the way to their seasonal patterns. No? So you would see here how um, there are similarities and there are distinct differences in um, the biology and the life histories of these three major um, zooplankton um, taxa that we are talking about, at least for lakes. No? But there are many others, no? um, even in marine environments. Actually, they're much more diverse in marine environments. But um, for our purpose, no, since we study freshwater zooplankton, um, we... Um, focus on these three major taxa. Now, zooplankton research in the Philippines actually has a very rich history. Yun nga lang, um, medyo konte lang yung um, um, proponents no, na involved dito. So the first ever um, uh, zooplankton to have been described no, from the Philippines is this rotifer. Trocosfera equatorialis, which was described by um, Carl Semper in 1872. Okay? So um, at least based on the, the uh, publication history, so ito yung unang lumabas na species ng, ng um, zooplankton na na-describe mula sa Pilipinas. It is um, a rotifer. Okay? So Trocosfera equatorialis. And then... Um, in this seminal work by uh, Father Casto de Elera, um, which is uh, who is a, a Dominican uh, professor of natural history and the second director of the um, UST Museum, um, in the late 1890s, no, uh, 1895 to be exact, yung volume two nung kanyang pinablish na work, um, he wrote in the Catalogo Sistematico de, to de Toda la Fauna de Filipinas. Um, no, he devoted uh, the entire volume two, no, um, wherein he described no, the arthropods. Okay? Um, and and in, in this book, no, um, he mentioned the record of a copepod, no, Lernanthropus musca, which is actually um, uh, an ectoparasitic copepod that has been um, obtained, no from specimens of pufferfish, no, diodon, kita nyo rito yung diodon de Manila, no, collected from Manila, most probably uh, from uh, Manila Bay. So you would see here, no, um, the first record of uh, a copepod um, to appear, no, uh, based on um, Philippine um, taxa. Okay, so this um, may be considered, no, the first... Uh, uh, record no, of, of um, a, a copepod that has been um, worked on or at least appeared in a publication no, coming from uh, the University of Santo Tomas. Then in um, the 1930s, so you see here um, an article from the Philippine Journal of Science by um, Friedrich Kiefer, no, who is uh, based in um, Heidelberg. Um, he published a paper on the freshwater copepods of uh, Luzon Island, Philippines. No? Napakaganda ng translation ng freshwater sa German. No? Suswasser. Uh, Suswasser actually means sweet water. So parabang opposite ng um, salt water, no? maalat na tubig. Pag freshwater, tawag nila matamis na tubig. No? So um, in this paper by uh, Frederick Kiefer, who is actually a high school teacher no, in, in, in Germany. He wasn't even a, a trained um, scientist. No? He, he published this paper on freshwater copepods of Luzon Island. 
without actually having to step in the Philippines because um, he is an acclaimed uh, or uh, a known expert on copepods uh, from Germany. But then um, the specimens came by way of Professor C.F. Baker no, from uh, the UP College of Agriculture, which is now known as UP Los Baños. So you would see how um, UPLB no, has uh, also played a very big role in, in the early history of um, freshwater zooplankton uh, research in the country. And then um, later on, no, more Germans worked on um, the um, zooplankton of the Philippines. No, by the time of the Wallacea expedition in the 1930s, no, you have Robert Voltarek no, uh, together with um, Tressler. And then another name from UP Los Baños, no, uh, Daniel Bunyag, um, worked on the um, lakes of um, the of uh, Luzon Island no, that are part of uh, the lakes of the uh, that have been visited by the Wallacea expedition, which of course included uh, Luzon Island. And from um, this paper, you would see here how Voltarek and Tressler were able to um, list down um, several species though, of um, copepods um, that have been recorded from the Philippines or from Luzon. So you have uh, Diaptomus insulanus, you have Mesocyclops microlasius, so the Diaptomus brehmi, Tropodiaptomus gigantoviger, Diaptomus vexillifer, and Thermocyclops uh, wolterechi. So later on, you will see how these um, um, species no, would appear again in, in the researches that we have conducted um, in recent years. Okay. And um, this is another paper, um, again, by Friedrich Kiefer, wherein um, ha, he also um, helped describe no, um, species coming from the genus Thermocyclops from the Philippines, as well as from the genus um, Pseudodiaptomus also um, from the Philippines. No? So these are considered to be the backbone of many of the researches on freshwater zooplankton that have been conducted in the Philippines. No? Um, in recent times. Then there was a huge gap no? from the 1930s wherein um, you have your um, foreign scientists together with your um, Filipino collaborators um, working on um, describing no? or, or detailing the zooplankton um, fauna of the Philippines, at least for the major um, freshwater bodies that we do have. Um, and laki ng gap, no? It wasn't until um, Professor Augusto Simamaril in the 1970s started to revisit the zooplankton of our country. Okay, um, Professor Mamaril is a graduate of UP Diliman for his uh, bachelor's degree in zoology, and then later on went to take his master's in um, zoology um, in the University of Waterloo in Canada. There, he um, studied under the tutelage of um, one of the foremost um, scientists working on uh, zooplankton in the 20th century. You have Constantine Herbert Fernando, um, or C.H. Fernando, as he's more commonly known. And based on the master's thesis of Professor Mamaril, which he later on got to publish in the Natural and Applied Science Bulletin of UP Diliman, he was able to identify and list down 67 rotifers, um, 49 cladocera, and nine copepod species uh, from different uh, freshwater ecosystems in the country. Then um, that was um, the, his work, no? um, his seminal work, Mamaril and Fernando in 1978. And then he followed this up with um, his paper, which appeared in 1986 um, as part of the book, um, Flora. Uh, Guide to the Flora and Fauna of the Philippines, no, published by uh, UP. And um, also, uh, he was able to contribute work, no, um, transferring uh, Diaptomus insulanus no, um, and then raising a new genus, no, Filipino Diaptomus insulanus, um, Lai Mamaril and Fernando in 1979, which was a paper that came out in the journal Costasiana. And um, that uh, was an endemic genus no, to the Philippines. 
So I consider myself to be very fortunate no, to work with um, uh, Professor Mamaril. Um, he was never my teacher in college. Of course, I was uh, a Tomasian all the way. Um, but um, leading to my PhD, I started uh, an email correspondence with him because I really wanted to find out more about zooplankton, um, yung topic ng aking magiging uh, PhD dissertation. And um, knowing and acknowledging his expertise, no, um, I, I, I reached out to him. And then um, he responded, no, that started a series of uh, meetings and led to uh, a very good collaboration and friendship. I consider him as one of my uh, mentors for my, um, uh, in my academic career. No? Um, whether it be academic advice or personal matters. Um, and I'm very happy that even my students no, um, are, are enjoying um, being mentored by him, no? um, unofficially, of course. And um, we have written several papers together um, as a result of our works no? um, on Philippine freshwater zooplankton. Now, I would like to share some gaps in um, zooplankton research in the Philippines. No? So from 1986, again, to 2008, um, from the time that um, Sir Mamaril uh, wrote his um, monograph no, on, on Philippine freshwater zooplankton, um, all the way to 2008, uh, there was very low publication output on freshwater zooplankton research. Um, and many studies formed part of the gray literature. Of course, the causes would stem from number one, lack of interest, no, to having a lack of trained experts in, in um, this, ta this taxa, okay? And um, of course, um, for those who have tried to attempt uh, or attempted no, to, to study zooplankton, they were hampered by the presence of outdated keys already or references. Um, and therefore, many of these efforts um, had not reach publication status no, in, in valid uh, journals in our discipline because of um, the lack of access no, to the correct um, uh, literature. Also, another thing that hampered uh, further research in the field was the fact that many of the type specimens that we have on plankton, on zooplankton, have either been lost or non-existent or have been deposited in foreign museums. No? Um, but in, in so many ways, no, we can also consider this as a blessing because um, remember what happened in during the American, um, well, during the Japanese occupation wherein um, when they were trying to liberate Manila, you have um, the Bureau of Science uh, building was bombed no, to the ground. What if um, many of the holotypes no, for these um, specimens were found and then they would have been lost. No? And in so many ways, um, they had been well taken care of in, in museums, for example, in Germany, um, which have been uh, very instrumental in the works that we have um, been able to conduct on um, freshwater zooplankton um, in recent times, no? because we have always been referring to these um, specimens um, that are deposited in these foreign museums. So, for example, no? What happened to these specimens you know, from the work of Mamaril and Fernando? Um, they actually stayed with Professor Fernando in the University of Waterloo. Um, these also included some of the specimens collected by the what Sir Mamaril would refer to as the Pope of Cladocerology, you know, uh, David Frey, um, who, who collaborated a lot with um, Professor Fernando and uh, Professor Mamaril. You know? um, uh, on, on the works of uh, Professor Mamaril. David Frey had specimens collected from the 1930s onwards no, on copepods from um, Lake Lanao, for example, during the early part of the 20th century. No? So, nasa na sila ngayon. Um, we were very happy to find out that these specimens are actually in good um, condition in the Likongchen uh, Natural History Museum in the National University of Singapore. So in 2018, when um, 
uh, Dr. Tordesillas, no, um, uh, a colleague who also works on, on zooplankton, and myself was able to visit the facility, we were very fortunate to have been able to see um, the specimens no, that um, were used no, um, during the uh, publication of the most important um, works on, on Philippine freshwater zooplankton. And so it is my hope that uh, we would be able to do more studies on these specimens in um, Singapore, no? um, because um, we're trying to look for some species that are very important no? in terms of Philippine freshwater zooplankton diversity. And um, we want to confirm kung talaga bang ano yung nakita ng mga previous pay, mga previous um, scientists who work on Philippine freshwater zooplankton among others okay um but that's in Singapore it's still in another country um so the Philippines cannot remain without a reference zooplankton for its uh, reference collection for its freshwater zooplankton no? and and of course um, museums such as the uh, UPLB Museum of Natural History play a very big role in, in, in this, no? Um, so in UST, no, we wanted to do our part as well. And so in, in 2011, after I uh, finished my uh, PhD, the first proposal I submitted to our um, research center for funding was the establishment of a Philippine freshwater zooplankton reference collection and database. So for this um, particular work, I had the great opportunity to work with um, Professor Henry Dumont, um, who was then a professor in um, Jinan University in Guangzhou, uh, China, together with uh, Professor Bo Ping Han, who headed the Institute of Hydrobiology then. Um, professor Dumont was a professor in the University of Ghent no, for most of his career and is one of the um, leading authorities no, in freshwater zooplankton um, in the world. So um, we tied up this uh, research effort with them um, and then uh, went on and started um, to establish our own um, reference collection for um, Philippine freshwater zooplankton. So this would be... Uh, me doing the collection of uh, zooplankton using different um, plankton nets, uh, samplers, or you would see here you know, the evolution of the headgear I use during fieldwork you know, uh, from fisherman's caps to flat tweed caps to Panama hats. You know, but either way, uh, they were a big help to me whenever I, I do work on zooplankton together with my um, students no, in different parts of the country. So um, apart from the help I got from uh, Jinan University, and of course, uh, I, I, I went on a, a training no, in the Museum and Institute of Zoology in um, the Polish Academy of Sciences. This is in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, where I got the chance to um, train with um, Dr. Maria Holinska, who is uh, one of the experts in um, cyclopid copepods um, in the world. And so um, with my experience, you know, I, I stayed in their laboratory for one month in 2012. I was able to learn a lot uh, on how to actually keep my specimens no, in, for the zooplankton reference collection, how to organize my um, uh, database, how to organize my samples. And so these became very handy for me um, in, in um, working towards um, organizing um, the specimens we have in the laboratory. And then later on, um, because uh, in the laboratory, we don't just do taxonomy work. No, we do a lot of... Um, uh, ecology work, uh, we work with um, uh, archive data sets. Um, my exposure to some colleagues no, in the um, INRA in, in France, no? um, this is uh, the research center of the National Institute of um, Agronomic Research, in, in, uh, which is beside Lake Geneva in, in uh, France, no? um, where they kept 
um, specimens collected from as early as the 1930s um, to the present time no, on uh, for ecological studies, no, for, for morphometric studies of copepods. So I also got some ideas on how to organize our specimens no, from my trips there. Uh, and, and these became very useful later on no, when we were trying to analyze and study our specimens in the laboratory. So the major objectives of the uh, ZRC you know, of UST was to develop a systematic way of organizing and documenting um, collections. You know? This includes unsorted samples, sorted samples, um, dissected specimens uh, mounted on slides. And of course, come up with a standardized zooplankton spa. No? Um, this is one of the things I miss uh, now that we are in a pandemic. No, going to the spa. No, when I say spa, of course, uh, literally and figuratively, spa means sampling, processing, and analysis of a zooplankton. Okay? Um, I know some of my um, former and present students are in the audience right now. Uh, one of them is um, responsible for doing molecular work on our um, collected samples. So, hindi na lang kami basta gagawa ng spa no? or gumagamit ng spa ngayon, pati spam. No? Kasi meron na rin magmamolecular sa amin. But of course, we the, the transition towards utilizing molecular techniques in analyzing our um, specimens took a while because we wanted to make sure first that we got the classical um, alpha taxonomy no, morphological, using morphological techniques um, um, standardized and um, we had to make sure that it's accurate and correct before we start moving into molecular because we all know very well that um, these two, no, your classical uh, taxonomic techniques as well as your molecular techniques go hand in hand. No, and we cannot just go and jump into the molecular without establishing our basics first. So we had to make sure that um, all bases were covered first, no, so to speak. So from there, we were able to come up with our um, field and laboratory guide for um, zooplankton spa. No, um, now that we are working on more um, taxa, more... Um, um, Fresh water, types of freshwater ecosystems, we have developed our own field and laboratory guide uh, for Philippine freshwaters. Um, this is uh, an internal document that we use for our students and our well, graduate and undergraduate. Um, para lang meron kaming isang pinanggagalingan. No? Every time we go to the field, ano yung mga kailangan gawin, ano yung mga kailangan bitbitin, ano yung mga kailangan ayusin paano yung analysis na dapat gawin sa mga specimens, etc. And um, because uh, we have now tried to migrate working um, on, on uh, organizing our database, no? uh, one of our PhD students in the lab um, attended a training um, with the uh, GBIF no? um, in order to convert no, our um, zooplankton ZRC um, for integration with a global biodiversity um, uh, database already. And um, we were fortunate that in UST, um, when the Central Laboratory Building was constructed in 2017, 2018, um, we were given uh, a place no, to store our samples, um, hopefully uh, permanently already. So um, the best uh, research group in, in the USTRC National, when I say best, hindi kami nagmamagaling, no? um, it is the Biodiversity, Ecology, Systematics, and Taxonomy uh, research group no? within our um, research center. We were given an entire half floor of the uh, seventh floor no? nung, nung um, Central Laboratory Building, and when we dedicated one laboratory for the collections. So this is how it looks like now, no? inside the collection room of the Central Laboratory Building. 
um, where we keep our specimens no? um, as par forming part of the ZRC. Um, and they are organized. Um, you have the slides, you have the sorted specimens in, in collection bottles. No? Um, we have a uniform way of categorizing everything um, and, and um, making sure they're all organized. It's just quite challenging because um, even though we tried our best no, to maintain our, the specimens, no, may mga times na tutuyuan pa rin kami ng specimens, pag nasira yung aircon, no, may mga ganong nangyayari. No? Um, but, but we try to um, manage our best no, um, with that. And of course, uh, for that effort, um, I have to um, credit no, our amazing uh, research group, um, the ZESEL, no, or the Zooplankton Ecology, Systematics, and Limnology Laboratory of um, the UST, um, wherein um, me, together with um, Dr. Uh, JC Briones, who now heads uh, an independent subgroup in, in our um, uh, lab no? um, dedicated to working on fish parasites no? um, together with our um, research affiliates no? who are former students of the lab as well, our RAs and our graduate students as well as our undergraduate students have um, contributed immensely to. So these are the things that we do in the lab. No, um, I would like to um, focus now on some um, key highlights no, later for our research works. So these are the successes I consider to be the most important no, uh, for the laboratory. Um, of course, um, we have been able to graduate three PhDs already and 18 master's degree holders. Um, big majority of whom are um, have continued on to take their PhDs. Um, some of them in UST, others uh, abroad, no. Um, and then matatanda na sila, so some many of them have also gone on to um, build their own research groups, and more importantly, some have gone on to um, start their families, no. So hindi na lang ako basta papa, uh, lolo na ako ng research group namin kasi may mga apo na rin kami. Okay? So these are some of the them, no? particularly the uh, alumni of the laboratory. No? Uh, Nagkikita-kita nagkita -kita nung early part ng uh, pandemic. And then um, for some of the examples of the researches that um, we do in the lab, um, one of the big contributions to zooplankton research work is um, this paper that came out in the Raffles Bulletin of Zoology in um, 2017. So we made an annotated checklist and in insular distribution of freshwater microcrustaceans um, in the Philippines. So it is, um, I think, no, uh, the most updated checklist on the taxonomy, distribution, and current status of Philippine freshwater microcrustaceans. We were able to document 91 species, no, 55 Clodocerans uh, and 36 Copepods um, from six and four families respectively, collected from around 139 sites no, uh, throughout the country. And um, according to our most recent estimates, no, um, these would be the total number of Philippine records um, the total number of species recorded and the number of slides deposited that we have in our um, database. No? Um, I think apart from documenting um, just the mere numbers, what's more important is we were also able to set some of the uh, taxonomic anomalies um, straight because um, at least we were able to emphasize already um, that there were some um, synonymies or misidentifications that um, had to be corrected. No? Um, these were found, of course, in the previous um, papers that have been um, published. So that um, when anyone wants to take a closer look at Philippine freshwater zooplankton, at least they don't have to refer back to the original papers. No? Some of them have been published in German even. 
um, para lang balikan pa isa-isa. No? We did that already for them. So hopefully, there would be um, minimal challenges no, to setting the taxonomy straight no, when it comes to um, these groups. Okay. Um, then in 2012, um, this is a serendipitous event that happened in the laboratory. No, um, because uh, we were able to document the presence of uh, a non-native zooplankton species here, um, Arctodiatomus dorsalis, no? um, which was um, initially um, documented from 18 out of 27 um, freshwater um, habitats throughout the country. So ano bang story ng A. dorsalis na yan? Um, when I was doing my PhD, there was this one calanoid copepod that I've been um, that I've encountered no, from Lake Taal um, and, and several other um, lakes in the Philippines. Na hindi ko maki out using regional keys, no keys published by Sir Mamaril no on Philippine zooplankton, and of course keys um, on calanoid copepods uh, published. Um, from other countries in Southeast Asia. So hindi ko siya ma-identify talaga. Then by the time that uh, we started collaborating with uh, Professor Dumont, um, we started um, adding to the collection and then we showed him what we have had in the laboratory. And then um, we told him that there was this one species which remains to elude us no, in terms of identification. And then he said that, well, I think I've seen this before in samples collected from the Philippines in the 1990s nung may nag-training daw sa kanya um, from LLDA no na pumunta sa Belgium. Alam ko to, sabi niya. And then um, he went on to verify it was um Arctodiaptomus dorsalis no. He had us verify no um, some key characters and true enough it was Arctodiaptomus dorsalis, and kaya pala namin siya hindi ma-identify is because it is not from the region. It is a neotropical species. It was um, native to Central America and the southern part of North America. Okay? So kaya pala namin siya hindi ma-identify. Maling kiss yung tinitignan namin. No? And uh, kalat na siya. Hindi lang siya sa Lake Taal nakikita, hindi lang siya sa Seven Lakes ng San Pablo or sa Laguna de Baik. Kitang-kita na rin siya sa ibang lakes, no? sa uh, Bicol region. Okay? And also in samples that we were able to collect from Lake Cebu in South Cotabato. And um, at present, no, based on more studies that we have done, we have found it in around 23 out of 32 lake and river ecosystems throughout the Philippines. And the bad news is it has already displaced seven species from their native habitats. And um, these would be now the um, sampling localities where um, we have uh, been able to identify or find um, Arctodiaptomus dorsalis in the Philippines. So there are two places wherein we consider them to be new records. One of them would be in Sagada and the other one would be in Candaba Swamp area. Okay, so nakita na rin siya doon. So th those would be the northernmost um, distributions of Ader Salis. Now, we weren't, of course, going to stop with the taxonomy um, and the distribution. No, we had to compare. Um, um, we had to look, no, um, with data generated on culture experiments, no, on Ader Salis, no, in order for us to better understand its biology. Bakit pa siya naging um, kalat, no, sa uh, sa Philippines? Okay, so um, Dr. Tordesillas, no, when he was still working for his um, PhD, um, conducted several experiments no, um, looking at effects of temperature, um, the effect of food concentration on the reproduction capacity of uh, Ader Salis. And um, we were able to understand better no, why it actually spread to all these places in the Philippines and um, why it persists. No, and in the process, unfortunately, it has displaced native species that are found in the Philippines as well. So from all these studies that we have conducted, we were able to establish some key points. No? 
uh, number one, it was able to hitchhike undetected no? with a more economically important larger species, no? perhaps tilapia or aquarium fishes um, from its point of origin in, in uh, South America or Central America um, all the way to the Philippines. And then from Laguna de Bae, where it was uh, first recorded in the 1990s no? um, by, by staff of LLDA. Nalipat naman siya sa ibang lakes sa Pilipinas because many of the tilapia fry or fingerlings that were used to seed other lakes no, came from Laguna de Bae. And remember that um, when you transport these fry or fingerlings, it usually has the water there. And if adults or um, oviguerous individuals of these uh, Ador salis are in the water, hindi naman na makikita yun, di ba? So, mabibitbit na siya papunta sa ibang lugar. The problem is, in the Philippines, we do have eutrophic tropical lakes. Okay? Um, karamihan ng lakes natin dito, eutrophic, naturally. Tapos, dinadagdagan pa natin yung nutrients niya, kaya mas nagiging mataas yung nutrient levels niya. Eh, ang Ador Salis, kahit sa Amerika, alam nila na mahilig siya sa eutrophic environments. And therefore, the natural lakes and river systems we have here in the Philippines are so homey to them. And this is um, after doing a lot of these studies that we have done, no, um, looking at uh, morphometrics, looking at uh, effects of food concentration and temperature, um, eutrophic environments are more um, favorable for the um, development of Ador Salis. And therefore, kaya siya kumalat. Now, another study pointed out to the fact na yung population sa Ador Salis na meron tayo sa Pilipinas, no? mula nun sa unang beses na nakita sila versus yung mas recent, they seem to be much, growing much larger. Okay? So they have populations with individuals getting larger now compared to when they were first recorded. No? And remember that since larger individuals lay more eggs, and um, they have far more superior reproductive capabilities, no? malaki yung chance na kaya siya mas nagdo-dominate kesa do sa ating mga native kalanoid copepods na karamihan niya sa kanila na displaced na niya. Okay? So, yun yung isa sa mga um, important findings ng laboratory namin which uh, just started out from a mere accident na unidentified specimen yun pala. Um, it will spark an entire research field no? na marami na rin um, students namin sa laboratory ang um, nakapag-aral noon and na-publish na rin. Um, then we also have this um, study no? uh, which was a product of my uh, research visit to um, uh, Poland. Um, we did um, more serious work on the taxonomy of some cyclopid copepods um, in the Philippines. And as a result, we were able to describe one um, species um, of uh, cyclopid copepod, no? um, which was collected from uh, Lake Siloton in November 2006, no? um, very early on. Pero since sa katabi ng maayos yung specimens namin, we were able to use this uh, six years later for a more detailed taxonomic work that we did. No? So we named the species Mesocyclops augusti. No? Um, and this is, of course, um, in honor of uh, Professor Mamaril. No? I, I said to myself, uh, when I get to describe a new species, I would definitely name the first one in honor of Sir Mamaril. Um, and that's what we did. No? So we now have um, Mesocyclops augusti, um, which was um, described from specimens collected from Lake Siloton. And then um, we were able to um, look at the, um, its relationship with some of the other closely related um, um, Mesocyclops species. No? So it is closely related to Mesocyclops dissimilis, okay? uh, which is uh, found in um, Vietnam. Actually, Mesocyclops augusti is also found um, no, um, in specimens no, um, are, have been identified from Vietnam as well as that of Mindanao. Now, some other important 
studies uh, or, or findings that we have had recently. Of course, um, Lake Taal is my most favorite lake no, uh, to study in, in my career so far. Um, of course, owing to its different um, characteristics, no, um, all the way from my master's to my PhD, even to my current researches, laging may Lake Taal. And um, kaya nung nalaman ko yung, um, yung binalita ni Ma'am Vivian Kamacha sa akin yung, nangya- yung resulta nung kanilang ginagawang work no? on, on um, Sardinella Tawilis. Grabe na lang yung tuwa ko kasi isa kami sa mga nag-fail no? na mag-transport ng Tawilis no? uh, and mag- mag-rear sa kanya in captivity. Dahil talagang mahirap. So uh, a big um, congratulations to the team of uh, Dr. Vivian Camacho and the and, uh, Limno Station of UPLB for um, being able to do something no, um, that will have a big impact on, on studies on Lake Taal. Of course, um, Lake Taal is interesting because of all these characteristics, because of the perennial dangers that the flora and fauna of Lake Taal are facing because of um, um, natural and man-made um, uh, challenges no, that, that occur. And kahit na balibalik ta rin pa natin yan, napaka-konti pa lang ng alam natin tungkol sa Lake Taal. Napakarami pang pwedeng aralin at dapat aralin sa Lake Taal. So hindi rin kami um, susuko no, sa pag, pag-discover ng mas marami pang bagay tungkol sa Lake Taal at sa mga organisms na nakikita sa kanya. So Ang Lake Taal kilalang kilala sa tinatawag naming superstars ng Philippine Freshwater Biodiversity, no? Dalawa sa kanila ay nakikita sa Lake Taal lamang, ang Sardinella tawilis, no? Uh, the only freshwater sardinella in the entire planet. And of course, you have the Hydrophis semperi, which is the Lake Taal sea snake, okay? So both are endemic to Lake Taal and both are of marine origin. But of course, um my plankton work has led me to study other um, un- uncharismatic species no? that also should be considered um, superstars no? of, of Philippine freshwater biodiversity. Yun nga lang, microscopic kasi sila eh, kaya ang hirap nilang i-publicize. No? Pero we have, for example, this one, Sudodiaptomus brehmi, um, which was... Um, first described by Friedrich Kiefer in 1939. So this is very rare no, um, in, in Lake Taal, but it's still found in Lake Taal. And uh, Lake Taal is actually the second known locality where it has been found because the type species were collected from Lake Nauhan, no? um, and, and they have been described by Kiefer in 1939. Ngayon, nung inaaral namin yung Arctodiaptomus dorsalis. Unfortunately, wala na pala yung um, uh, A. dorsalis na yan sa Lake Nauhan. Puro A, uh, sorry, yung P. bremi na yan, hindi na namin nakita sa Lake Nauhan. Instead, puro A. dorsalis na ang nakita namin sa kanya. Okay? So, ang nangyari ngayon, sa Lake Taal na lang siya nakikita at present. No? Now, um, when I first encountered this species and was able to identify it. Uh, I was able to identify it when I was in, in, in Germany doing my um, PhD sandwich uh, program doon. No? That's where I took all these SEMs and um, tried to key out anong species ba siya ng Pseudodiaptomus. Um, sabi sa akin nung collaborator namin from the US, no, si Chad Walter, who is the um, foremost authority on Pseudodiaptomus in the world. Sabi niya, kailangan mong i-redescribe yan. Now, unfortunately, hindi ko na yun nagawa. No? So, um, it's a leftover from my dissertation. But then, uh, one of my um, master's students, no, um, when she was uh, looking for a master's topic, I told her that she should um, include no, P. Bremi um, for her thesis no? and, and uh, should work on the redescription as one of the aspects that she has to focus on. And I, I thank her for taking on the challenge because eventually, you know, we were able to redescribe um, Pseudodiaptomus bremi because of um, 
her hard work. No? Um, but before that, um, a group of undergraduate students of mine no, worked on samples collected from Lake Taal no, ng uh, PBREM. And then we compared no, um, specimens collected from 2009 versus 2013 to look at abundance and morphometric characters no, of, of um, this species. Uh, we co-authored the work together with um, Chad Walter of the Smithsonian. And then by the following year, na published na ni uh, Michea Ginto yung um, one of the two papers that came out of her master's thesis. So the first one is this red description of um, P. Bremi, um, which was um, uh, from now uh, based on specimens collected from Lake Taal. Um, dahil wala na rin kami talagang makitang specimens collected from Lake Nauhan. But we still had some... Um, uh, we were able to designate uh, lectotypes and paralectotypes no? um, based on the kefir specimens which were collected from Lake Nauhan. And then, of course, we had to utilize uh, samples that were collected um, and deposited in our zooplankton reference collection. So these are the line drawings based on uh, where we based the, the description of uh, P. Bremi um, in. And then another interesting set of species that we found in Lake Taal are these four harpactoid copepods. No, harpactoid copepods are quite difficult to work with. Um, they're quite small. No, my, my, my master's student who worked on them, Ms. Ida Pontillas, um, really had a hard time dissecting them. And I myself have a hard time dissecting harpactoid copepods. But um, we were able to identify it naman to species level. Um, so we have these four species identified from Lake Taal. So you might say, ano ngayon? Di apat na species na dagdagan ninyo yung record sa Lake Taal. Di mabuti. The funny thing is, these four species, number one, are new Philippine records. Number two, they are all found in marine and or brackish water environments in other parts of the world. So these four species are now found in the Philippines in Lake Taal. And by mere fact of looking at the um, origin of Lake Taal, which used to be open to Balayan Bay, we know for a fact that they may have come, of course, from marine origins. And, that's, and, and, and after Lake Taal had been landlocked, now they are found in Lake Taal. Okay? So it all parang tawilis at semperay, they point out to the marine origins of many of the specimen, the, the species that are found in Lake Taal. So, napakagandang gawan ng further studies. Uh, but we do need to make more collections um, of these specimens no? uh, and do more analysis um, to be able to find out more about these four harpacticoid copepods. Um, and then uh, for the ecology part, no, so that's the taxonomy part of the work. Now for the ecology part, um, I'll just share with you some slides on the work that we have been doing on Laguna de Bay. Um, uh, this is a result of the research that we have conducted on um, Laguna Lake, no? um, together with our colleagues from the um, Research Institute for Humanity and Nature in uh, Japan. So... For this particular study, we just like to point out that we um, collected um, various specimens, no? so plankton, bentos, fish, um, from more than 30 sites in Laguna, around Laguna de Bay, subjected them to stabilized isotope analysis, and um, we were able to find out very interesting patterns. So for example, here you have a principal component um, by plot showing you 82.75% um, um, uh, similarity no? um, using the um, total nitrogen and total phosphorus loadings no? in, in uh, Laguna de Bay and how this was actually related to the fraction of built up area and fraction of cropland area no? in the watershed. Now, Using those data um, on, on nutrient levels, no, we also used, um, and then the stable isotope data, we were able to 
collect the um, delta uh, 13 carbon and delta 15 nitrogen signatures of zooplankton in mollusk um, in, in Laguna de Bay. And they follow the same pattern that we observe for um, the principal component biplot um, using total nitrogen and total phosphorus. And if you look at the water quality parameters, no, as I mentioned, they form very similar patterns. And um, we used um, canonical correspondence analysis. No, we were able to look at the position now of um, zooplankton. For instance, you have here the invasive Arctodiaptomus dorsalis, no, which was um, well distributed, no, um, in 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 Laguna de Bay, and uh, more or less, no, parang uh, hindi siya ganon ka nag apektado na nung nung current conditions on lake, so um nandulo siya sa gitna no nung 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 um biplot no when you consider um analyzing the uh, physical chemical variables versus the distribution and abundance of ader salis okay so it's quite widespread well distributed around laguna de bay and then if you look now at the si biplot here um you will see the trophic position now of your zooplankton okay compared to the um, POM, the EOM, the mollusks, and the, well, uh, fish, no? Here, the representative would be tilapia. And then this is also, we also made some analysis that when we split it out into the different uh, bays, no? Central, South, West, and East bays. And um, you would see how um, uniform, no? The conditions are. And then if you look here at this correlation between the uh, nitrogen stable isotope and human population density, you would see that all these taxa would actually have um, uh, direct relationships, no? which means that um, the higher your human population density index is, the higher your um, delta-15 nitrogen stable isotope is. Okay? So directly related yung dalawa, which means may malaki ang role ng um ng dami ng tao sa watershed no dun sa klase ng response ng lake no sa eutrophication okay so this is true for the different taxa that we have investigated so if you put all of those together you would be able to see laguna de bay in a nutshell no so you would have the uh, positive feedback no from your built up areas and croplands to your nutrient cycling now, which have a positive impact now on eutrophication, which then has a positive impact now on your um, delta-15 nitrogen um, uh, signatures for plankton, benthos, and tilapia. But then negative no, um, impacts on zooplankton diversity, okay? negative impacts on mollusk diversity, and we are yet to determine their impacts now on the trophic level. Okay, so in terms of what its impact is in terms of ecosystem functioning. And so if you summarize all of that, you would see here how human activities in the tributaries would reflect no, on the environmental conditions that are found in the lake and would have an impact now on the biodiversity status and would then translate to changes that are observable or present in terms of the food web. Now, dun tayo sa applied. So this is the last one that I would like to share for this afternoon. So one of my PhD students um, collaborated with some chemists no, we have on in, in, in UST to work on the chronic toxicity of zinc oxide nanoparticles no, on the survival, growth, and reproduction of Arctodiaptomus dorsalis. So mula sa salot, no, invasive siya. Ngayon, tinitignan namin um, ano yung pwede nating malaman no, dun sa pagiging widespread niya and um, probably how we can look at possible environmental impacts. So we decided to look at um, nanomaterials and nanoparticles. No? So for example, here are data on the impacts no, of zinc oxide nanoparticles. Um, you would see here how increasing levels of zinc oxide nanoparticles would have a negative impact now on the survival of um, Arctodiaptomus dorsalis at uh, different concentrations. Okay? Ano yung importansya nito? Remember that 
we have been receiving a lot of concerns on the use of nanomaterials and nanoparticles in um, products that we are um, coming up with and using no, uh, in our daily lives. Remember that these eventually find their way into the environment and are most often than not washed off into freshwater environments. So how does it impact and how will it find its way into our food web? Definitely, if you have organisms that can consume it, it will be passed on to higher trophic levels. And so that's what we are trying to look at. Now, bakit yung A dorsalis yung ginamit natin? Um, because una sa lahat, na it's everywhere na. Secondly, if you look at Laguna de Bay, where it is widespread, as, as presented in the previous results that we have, and remember that Laguna de Bay also receives a lot of wash-offs no, from the watershed, from industrial, organic, or domestic uh, wastewater. So yung A dorsalis na nandun, tagatanggap na lang. No? Eh kung maraming nanoparticles at nanomaterials dun sa tubig na napupunta sa Laguna de Bay, definitely may mangyayari or may, may, may epekto yun dun sa A dorsalis na nandun. So ito yung ginamit namin no? so, for the applied aspect of the research. So... Um, those are for the researches. No, uh, I would like to invite all the audience here no, to, um, for example, uh, these are some of the outreach and professional activities that we've been doing. Um, I hope you would be able to um, uh, join us. No, this is, for example, the first ever Philippine Symposium on Fresh, Freshwater Biodiversity and Ecosystems, which we held in UST where we also held um, Taalaman, no? the lake's first biomuseum during the same time. Um, ito yung isa dun sa mga last attempts namin na magdala ng Sardinella Tawilis no? papunta sa UST, pero buti nakarating siya sa mayon dun, di na siya nakarating ng Espanya. No? Dahil um, yun niya, ang hirap niya talagang i-culture sa laboratory. We even use circular tanks for that purpose. Okay? And then... Um, this was followed up by the second PSFBE. Um, we hope you can join us for the third, which was canceled um, due to the pandemic, but we will still push through with this. Um, uh, the host would be Ateneo de Manila. Um, hopefully by next year, we can push through with this. And then um, for those of you, of course, you're, uh, this is organized by the natural, uh, Museum of Natural History. Um, some of our UPLB MNH colleagues would be presenting papers here no, um, in the symposium and annual meeting of the ASBP. I hope you can join us. And one of your, well, your, your curator for moths and spiders would be our keynote speaker, no? so Dr. Amy Lynn um, Dupo. And I'd like to thank... Um, our dearest collaborators uh, from different countries no, uh, for um, the research works that we have been doing um, this past decade together with our Filipino colleagues who have also been collaborating with us, no, including uh, Dr. Zafaralia, who is um, my PhD uh, dissertation advisor, uh, my master's th uh, thesis advisor, so Dr. Bobby Pagolayan and Ma'am Alice Pagolayan, my fellow officers of the PSFS, um, and these different funding agencies. So maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Kung may tanong um, at di na ma-accommodate ma ng open forum, you may email me at this address. So salamat po. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, for that uh, very interesting presentation. No? Actually, uh, one thing na natutunan ko is nakaklassify pa pala ang zooplankton. <laughs> I thought, based on their size, no? I thought na pare-pareho lang na lang sila sir ng, ng sizes. And uh, of course, uh, I've, I've heard this about yung uh, zooplanktons being as indicate, bio-indicators for climate change. One thing na it, it struck me is, is that yung, yung UP College of Agriculture had a, you know, a small yes. but a significant role in the discovery of early uh, Philippine zooplankton uh, fauna. So it's a good presentation, sir. And thank you very much, sir. So uh, before we proceed to the Q&A, we, we promise that we will have a quiz. So who is considered, first question, who is considered as the foremost Filipino zooplanktologist at present?
So time's up. And 63% of you answered Augusto C. Mamaril Sr. Let's see the correct answer. So, okay. Correct. May junior na ba, sir? Meron. Meron na, sir. Pero hindi uh, siya naging planktologist. Hindi. Uh, medical, medical, med doctor. medical doctor. Medical <laughs> doctor. Okay, next question. What was the first zooplankton species described in the Philippines? Okay. So, sana nakapagpadala na kayo ng question. So, okay. A bit, uh, half. Half of you. Uh, answered Trocospera Equatoro. Yun. <laughs> and the answer is the first option. So congratulations to the fifth, to half of you. Next, the colonoid copepod Arc Arctodeaptus dorsalis was uh, native to what geographical area? Paleotropics, Neotropics, Australasia, and the Neartic. So, uh, okay. Uh, Neotropics, ang sagot ng 46%. Let's see if tama. And yes, sa Neotropics. Going to, towards our fourth question, what two Philippine lakes has the endemic Pseudodioptobus bremi? Uh, where it has been recorded from Laguna de Bay and Lake Taal, Lake Taal and Lake Lanao. And then the answer, uh, half of you answered Laguna de Bay and Lake Taal. Let's see. Oh, it's Lake Taal and Lake Nauhan. Sir, can you clarify? Yes, tama. Lake tama. Taal and Lake Nauhan. Okay, thank you. So... Our last, is it this last na yata ito? No, mayroon pang isa. So, acronym ang ZESL of what? Ba, dapat makuha nyo ito, no? Alright. Let's see. Zooplankton, ecology, systematics, and limnology. 50. Okay, siguro zoop. Okay. Baka may, nag, may nalito. Let's see. <laughs> okay, it's zooplankton, ecology, systematics, and limnology. Hindi zoology lang. Ha? All right, so let us check the leaderboard. And so, meron tayong uh, Sir Tatlo, si Kyle Ronquillo, si Sofia, at saka si Vince. I think um, siguro as judge, yeah, award na lang natin yung prize kay Kyle Ronquillo because uh, aside from being one of the leaders nung quiz, siya yung naglagay ng uh, full name. So later, uh, you can email me fa-cruz at uh, fa-cruz4 at up.edu.ph uh, for instructions how to claim your prize kasi may pa-prize daw si Sir Donnie. All right. Okay, so punta na tayo sa ating uh, Q&A. Alright. So, I hope na nakapaglagay na kayo ng mga questions dito sa ating chat box. So, uh, we have long questions actually. <laughs> and uh, just uh, keep them coming. Uh, we will try our best na masagot sila lahat. So, from Eduardo Liano. Um, okay, uh, so... Uh, he has two questions. Siguro isa-isahin natin. As this is about the alien or invasive uh, Aedes dorsalis. So the first question is, as this is occurring in the natural habitat, is there any recommendation on how to control the population of uh, this species and or how to avoid or at least minimize the displacement of our local indigenous freshwater zooplanktons? Okay. So thank you, sir. Ed? For the question, no. So, uh, unfortunately, given that um, either salis is microscopic, um, ang hirap na niyang i-control because um, it integrates itself into the zooplankton community already. Okay, so it will already form part of the entire zooplankton community of that particular um, ecosystem. It, it will mm -hmm. be very hard to really re-isolate it. 
from the other components of the um, community. So, ano na yung pwedeng gawin to control it? Wala. Unless kaya mo talagang mapigilan. Well, it is a reflection of how you are trying to protect the lake no, from the larger non uh, native species that can also be introduced into that particular ecosystem mm-hmm. so yun kung halimbawa mo pinipigilan mong may makapasok na na natives doon na mas malalaki na let's say fish no they pwedeng mapigilan mo rin yung pagpasok ng na native na zooplankton no mm-hmm. uh, doon sa lugar na yon pero pag nandun na siya, wala ka nang magagawa doon. Uh, let's just hope na walang kalanoid copy pad doon na madidisplace niya. O kaya hanapan na lang siya ng gamit. Which um, one thing that we can do is to really understand how probably it can be cultured for um, natural food ng mga isda. Although there's still a question of how nutritious mm-hmm. is it. Okay. Will it make for a good uh, natural food for the fish? Kasi there might be issues that can arise din kung siya yung ipakain mo, malay mo, malaki nga siya. Nalaman natin, for example, sa tawilis, no, uh, based on my master's thesis, siya yung pinakamaraming laman ng tiyan ng tawilis. Pero bakit yung tawilis, eh, mas maliliit ngayon kumpara noong unang panahon. Eh, bagong introduce lang naman din siya sa, Laguna, sa, sa Lake Taal. So, kailangan pa natin siyang mas aralin. So, siguro um, our colleagues doing aquaculture work, no, um, can can uh, investigate this as a natural source of food um, for fish. No? So, yeah. Thank you, sir. So, yung second question, um, aside from displacing local planktonic copepod uh, populations, are there any other potential negative effects of uh, adorsalysis? A dorsalis in the aquatic environment or in aquaculture. Okay, uh, I think related to my answer in the previous question, um, we are yet to find out unless we do more investigations on the possible nutritional impacts mm-hmm. of consuming more A dorsalis um, for the native fishes compared to consuming the Um, zooplankton community pre a dorsalis. So, kailangan mas malaman pa natin yun para natin ma-zero in meron ba siyang naging negative impact na iba apart from um, displacing uh, mm-hmm. native um, copepods. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, another questions or um, uh, comment? Freshwater zooplankton, uh, example, Moina and Daphnia, have been uh, used as li- live larval feed for o- important aquaculture species. Through your vast investigations on freshwater zooplanktons around the country, have you screened species which might have potential use in larv- larviculture of freshwater fish and crustaceans? Um, actually, that's uh, beyond the usual na ginagawa na namin sa laboratory. Um, although we do, we have started looking at, for example, um, fatty acid analysis of um, uh, zooplankton, no, um, and this can later on be used by our colleagues who would want to um, investigate more on the possible um, applications later on for aquaculture. Isa ito sa mga dapat mas matutukan ng ating mga Uh, nasa BFAR and also those who are working in the aquaculture industry, no, yung um, potential na ng zooplankton for natural food. Although this effort has started noon-noon pa, no? Um, even before there have been, yun nga, um, uh, initiatives to use, for example, Moina, uh, ma- Moina Micrura as natural food for um, rearing um, aquaculture um, commodities. Pero ay total na bring up na ni Sir Ed, no? Wala po kaming nakikita so far na natural populations ng Daphnia sa Philippines. Daphnia is, um, as far as we are concerned, uh, not naturally occurring in the country. 
ang meron po tayo na water fleece sa Pilipinas ay Moina and uh, several other genera such as Seriodaphnia, uh, Diaphanosoma, Bosmina, Kaidorus. No, yun po yung mga common natin sa mga lakes pero wala pong Daphnia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and meron din kaming parang baby investigations kung sino ba talaga yung nagsasabi na may Daphnia sa Pilipinas. And karamihan po, moy na din lang yung kanilang meron. Kasi nga naman medyo magkakamuka. No? For the untrained ay parang magkakamuka sila. No? Na, kasi water fleece naman sila lahat. No? So, ayun. Pero wala po tayong natural dust na population so far. Kung magkaroon po tayo o kung meron po kayong alam na natural daft niya populations, let us know so we can confirm. Dahil it might be a big find in itself kung may natural daft niya tayo. Hmm. Pero ang pinakamalapit pong kapitbahay natin na may daft niya ay Indonesia. So, so far. Okay, thank you sir. Uh, from uh, Dr. Vivian Camacho, uh, hi Dean Ray. Congratulations for a very interesting talk. Uh, thank you for very much for acknowledging uh, the UPLB Limnological Station's uh, efforts for the successful ex situ captivity of Tawilis. And her question is, do you have any idea how many of the Philippine freshwater plankton species are native, endemic, and introduced? Uh, probably it could be a number or percentage. And uh, with that, any increasing, decreasing trend based on your studies? If yes, uh, what are some of its uh, ecological implications? Okay. Uh, well, in terms of yung percentage, um, I have to get back on my notes mm-hmm. on that. No, pero we do have um, endemics uh, in in the Philippines. For example, yun yung Filipino diaptomus insulanus, uh, Filipino diaptomus vexillifer. Um, so the Diaptomus bremi, Mesocyclops augusti, Mesocyclops microlasius. Siguro mga sampu yan, more or less, na mga mm-hmm. um, endemics. No? Karamihan ng alam namin ay mga copepods no? from calanoids and cyclopids. Um, yung iba naman mga species natin, karamihan ay mga native or mga tropical cosmopolitan. So meaning nakikita sila widespread sila sa Southeast Asia, no? Many of the cladocerans and rotifers for example are like that. Tapos in terms of non-native, um yung confirmed talaga na non-native is the Arctodiaptomus um dorsalis because some of the others that um are found in the literature apparently misidentified lang. So for example yung dati no in in some of the previous papers yung Mesocyclops leucarti uh, na na-identify nung 1970s no dito daw sa Pilipinas apparently it's uh, Mesocyclops thermocyclopoides which is native to the Southeast Asian region at yung Mesocyclops um leucarti na sinasabi nila is actually restricted to the um paleo uh Paleartic regions, no. So, mahirap na maglagay ng number ngayon kasi marami pang kailangan ayusin sa taxonomy, no. Pero definitely we do have a good number of um, endemics and uh, native species uh, in the Philippines. Right, thank you. Uh, another comment uh, uh, from Dr. Camacho. Maybe we can look at the uh, natural predators of the invasive zooplankton. Uh, for example, another zooplankton or fish larvae, perhaps. So, sir, anong opinion nyo on that? Um, kakainin at kakainin niya ng isda. Mm. So, definitely, if if um, they're found in, uh, if they find its way here, um, makakain niya ng isda. No, pero to combat, uh, to fight an invasive plankton with another introduction parang hindi ako masyadong um, open doon kasi pare-parehong microscopic ito eh baka mamaya <laughs> may iba ring negative impacts na um, mangyari no pagka ano yun pero yun nga if we find that it will be uh, rewarding to let's say utilize it as natural source of food 
eh di kahit na na native siya, magkakaroon siya ng silbe or gamit in the in, uh, later on no, for the aquaculture industry. So, uh, Thank you, sir. Before I proceed to sa comment ni Eric Zusrizo, may may question din ako. I think, uh, sir, how do you safeguard the ZRC? Uh, the zoological reference collections in terms of you know being prepared for big disasters like ngayon di ba sa South Africa fire nagrage yung yung library and then yung kanila mga reference collections so how do you prepare yung ZRC ah uh, well uh at least for earthquakes no medyo na, naging comment na yan dati yung aming mga shelves walang parang protection mm-hmm. na ano and then we although yung lifespan ng bottles namin although marami rin nagsasabi hindi nga maganda na naka-pet bottles kami pero i still want to stick to that rather than using glass mm-hmm. kasi nga natatakot ako sa breakage naman kung sakaling um magkaroon ng earthquake of course some of our yung mga para types or lectotypes no they're deposited in at least the important taxa are deposited in other um, countries mm-hmm. but this is something that we want to collaborate with more established natural history museums uh, as well no um, for example ayun nga uh, with with UPLB with the National Museum um, to also um, start uh, their own collections and then meron later on parang um, exchange no of of um, uh, materials or even um, training ng mga staff mm-hmm. so we're we're more than willing to help out other um, uh, institutions identify specimens no um, para maayos nga yung ano na yan kasi yun nga with what happened to not just in South Africa no uh, yung yung fire sa may table Uh, mountain ngayon ano mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yun nga yung sinabi ko kanina yung World War II yes, no? sir. talagang na-raise yung ating um, Bureau of Science building maraming nawala ng mga specimens kailangan talaga no nakakalat yung specimens pero bago natin ikalat diba dapat organized muna siya yes, oh, oh, oh. tama yung identification para hindi naman sumakit yung ulo ng mga <laughs> mag-aaral later on so yun Okay, sir. And then uh, my second question, sir, uh, it's about yung tukod sa fish seeding. Um, interested lako whether yung mga zooplanktons do they have the natural uh, diseases also which can uh, be transferred from one community to another uh, during you know cases like fish seeding. Ah, uh, well. Uh, Dr. Dogma, your um, second director, director. Ba, ng, ng Natural History Museum. No? Um, of course, teacher namin siya sa graduate school sa UST. And um, nung nalaman niya ng zooplankton yung work ko, ang dami na niyang sinabi sa akin ng mga um, chytridiomycetes mm-hmm. na mga ang host nila ay mga rotifers, mga cladocera, mga copepod, na may work nga siya. None of them have been uh, mentioned as pathogens, no, for one. Pero, pero si pwede siyang maging host, no, mm-hmm. um, ng yun, yung mga ectosymbionts na yan. Actually, we had one student before who worked on studying ectosymbionts ng copepod sa Pasig River. No, we were able to identify some protists na ganon. But remember, you have Vibrio cholerae, which is pathogenic can actually cause outbreaks diba ng cholera and remember that they are um, found attached to the exoskeleton of copepods and so meron siya nabibitbit no definitely kung nagkataon na yung bitbit mm-hmm. ay nakakakos ng sakit eh pwede nga siyang makabitbit ng uh, salot kumbaga no to an yes, sir. place talaga So, yun, yun ang kanilang mga um, potential um, roles no, in the environment na may kinalaman sa health, may kinalaman din sa, well, perhaps, no, hindi mo maiiwasan dyan na baka mamaya some of these ectosymbionts mayroon palang negative impact sa fish community naman. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, yun niya. Um, dahil kinakain lagi ng isda ang, ano eh, ang, ang, yes, ang so. 
So, yun, no? Um, exciting, no? Yeah. We, uh, na- wala pa tayong masyadong alam dun sa mga aspeto na yun pagdating sa Pilipinas. Right. Pwedeng, um, uh, and, and, and daming pwedeng aralin pa in the future. Hopefully, others would be interested to look at these follow-up studies. No? So, yun. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, from Eric Zuz Rizzo, uh, I think he mentioned that uh, they have Eric one... Eric is, uh, ano namin yan, no? Uh, ano, uh, first, first generation. Oo, uh, uh, first generation. <laughs> Kay Dori, the species up for redescription for uh, Lake Lanao. So it's... Uh, Antalona Sudovercosa. Okay. And uh, he says uh, yung daya daya pa okay. Daya pa so ma uh, exisum. <laughs> exisum pa. widespread, no widespread in the uh, some parts of the Philippines. Okay. No? So based on molecular uh, data, yung nakita nila from Luzon could be a possible new species and it's a potential thesis for master students to check their uh, taxonomic characters to confirm taxonomic and systematic status. Also, um, another comment, uh, zooplankton also have parasites that may yes. be transferred. So generally, uh, it's an understudied area in the Philippines. In the Philippines, and, yes. Uh, and tropical waters in the world. Temperature studied ba siya? Well studied? In other um, tropical countries, like for example, you have uh, the broadfish tapeworm, Diphylobotrium latum, no? nakukuha mm-hmm. siya pag, di ba, pag ingest ng drinking water na may coffee pods. Mm-hmm. So, alam na siya from other tropical countries. No? Uh, that's why I had a former PhD student who worked on fish parasites kasi we were hoping to find a link no between um fish parasites at least and uh, the copepods that we study uh, mm-hmm. or the, the zooplankton that we study in general pero fortunately wala namang kaming nakitang possible cause of concern no na pwedeng oh, uh, <laughs> oh, kasi kung nagkataon di panic, ba uh, panic mode na naman tayo lahat oh dracunculus medinensis or diphylobotrium latum which we all know from our um parasitology classes di ba na um maraming na infect sa India, other parts of Asia. Isipin mo na lang kung may makita tayong counterpart niya dito sa Pilipinas, no? Di, mm-hmm. Problema na naman 'yan, no? So, so far wala pa naman, pero baka malay yon. Um, mara- hindi lang natin pa siya na encounter. Okay. So, I think there are no more questions from the audience, but we have one last comment from our director, Dr. Marian De Leon. Um, she agrees that this is one way of safeguarding our collections to have uh, duplicates in other collections. And I hope the ZRC can conduct a workshop on how to do the collection, the isolation, the spa, <laughs> yeah. preservation and maintenance of zooplankton. Okay. We did so, some before. Uh, actually, um, remember Ma'am Marian when NRCP had funded uh, the Lake Lanao um, study no, uh, a few years back. Um, some faculty members from MSU Marawi actually went to UST no, uh, para mag-aral ng kung paano namin ginagawa sa zooplankton reference collection. Kaso, di ba, nag-Marawi siege. Uh, okay. Nila na-implement ng maayos yung tinuro namin sa kanila na way to study. But hopefully in the future, yeah, um, we can do more of this uh, because uh, we want to develop uh, expertise among um, other Filipino researchers who would be interested no, to um, pursue zooplankton studies in the Philippines. Okay, thank you. So, yun nga, I think uh, oh, may mga biglang comments. So, um, Leslie Ubiso, Anilin Tampus, uh, Eduardo Liano, si Ma'am Vivian, uh, they are very interested and very much willing to uh, attend this training and hopefully uh, establish a freshwater zooplankton collection, uh, whether it's uh, in a un- based on a museum or pedding sa mga at least uh, uh, colleges and universities. So it's 11.40. We're going to wrap up in a few minutes. So before we uh, end our program, let me just uh, remind everyone uh, especially those who are in Zoom right now. To, so click on the evaluation 
form link that I have provided in the chat box. Uh, I hope walang problema yon. So, wala naman nag, nag-chat or nag-comment na kung may problema. Okay. So, uh, please make sure that you are able to answer that form uh, within uh, by 3 p.m. today. The Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UPLB, College Laguna, awards the Certificate of Recognition to Dr. Ray Don S. Papa for serving as our resource person during this uh, Emanish Biodiversity Seminar Series session. Would you like some zooplankton tea? The latest on the taxonomy, ecology, and applied research on freshwater zooplankton in the Philippines. Held today, March, uh, May 3, 2021, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is hereby affixed. So maraming sir. Salamat, Sir Ray, uh, for that uh, good presentation. And uh, to all, all our audience, uh, maraming salamat again for participating and being active in our discussions. And um, before ako ay, uh, before we end this session, meron lang akong public service announcement. Uh, as you all know, baka, or maybe be, most of you do not know that we are already uh, celebrating or commemorating the 500th year. Uh, quincentennial commemorations in the Philippines is started last week. So, uh, and the University of the Philippines have their own uh, celebration. It's called Gahum sa Buot, Tindig at Pamana ng Bayan. Pero sa UPLB Museum of Natural History, we will be holding our own uh, commemorations. It's called Balik Tanaw, Kasaysayan at Kalikasan. Uh, uh, a component of our uh, larger program, which is uh, Libang Siglo ng Pilipinas. And he announced lang po namin that we will be holding a quincentennial commemoration webinar series uh, from May, starting uh, May 17 hanggang September 22. So every two weeks, meron kaming special webinars that deal on, uh, you know, related to the topic of uh, uh, yung uh, Spanish conquest, uh, yung... yung influence ng different uh, conquering regimes dun sa particularly sa ating natural history and what we know right now on natural history and how it has uh, affected our environment. So plug in lang po namin yan and we hope that you would be able to partic- uh, you know, uh, spend time with us dito sa mga webinars na ito from May 17 to September 22. And uh, you could go to our website, mnh.uplb.edu.ph and write us at our email, mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. We are, in, uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and um, YouTube and Instagram. Just follow our uh, handle, UPLB Museum, and check out our Wikipedia and trip advisor uh, information. Just go. Look for UPLB Museum of Natural History. Yung ating recording uh, will be uploaded to our YouTube channel later or tomorrow morning. So with that, Sir Sir Papa, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. And to all our audience, maraming salamat po for continuing uh, your participation uh, during our webinar. So we have our next webinar on Wednesday and dun sa mga nagsa-study ng herbs and microbes, I think that will be an interesting uh, webinar for you. So maraming salamat po. Stay safe.